a simple mechanical device, this toy mouse can sense when it has reached the edge of the table and alter course just in time to avoid falling off. Mechanical toys endowed with the illusion of life. They fascinate us. Man, who designed these simple toys, can design an artificial man that will one day surpass its creator. So says Dr. Isaac Asimov, scientist and author of science fiction. The robots of today, he says, are crude and mindless compared with those that will follow. They crawl ponderously about in laboratories. They toil without respite at the dangerous and tedious jobs that men no longer deign to do. They have only just begun. The rise of the machines is inevitable. We're not talking science fiction nor crude tools such as your sat-nav, but our acceleration towards building a true artificial intelligence capable not just of computer heavy lifting, but of creativity, of imagination and maybe even consciousness. The field of artificial intelligence has been moving extremely quickly in the last few years. Do you know how AI will affect your life in the future? AI is going to be more impactful than the invention of the personal computer and the spread of mobile phones into your pocket. So the idea of artificial intelligence is not new. It's been around since the very earliest days of computing. I'm really pleased to be here to talk about one of the things that we're most excited about for the future, and that's artificial intelligence, or AI and its transformative potential both at Google and beyond. Today we're in the middle of great change. This new era is characterized by advances in computing, particularly in artificial intelligence. And at Google, we've seen firsthand the possibilities that AI can create. In fact, today there's very little technology at Google that isn't using machine learning, or ML, which is the primary approach underlying advancements in AI. Look at the history of um, Sputnik and the highway system, right? So Sputnik, what happened was the Russians, everybody knew the Russians were going to do this, and then the Sputnik movement happened, and then NASA happens, right? Eisenhower and the uh, interstate highway system in the 50s, right? This is that moment. This is the moment where the government collectively with private industry needs to say, these technologies are important. And by the way, whether they really needed the interstate highway system to move all the missiles around, the country benefited by the interstate highway system enormously, right? Just think about it, right? So whether it's, it's from a position of fear, right, um, that, or people are afraid of something, or whether it's a position of leadership, I don't really care how we get there. But I do think a national focus on investing, starting with, and so, so the specifics are pretty straightforward investing in research. America is the country that leads in these areas. There's every reason to think that we can continue that leadership. In 2011, I was diagnosed with a form of cancer that proceeded to reoccur over the next five years. Um, and I think my treatment was considerably changed as a result of these technologies. That's Krista Jones describing how machine learning technology helped her become cancer free. She says AI technologies are far more advanced today than when she was diagnosed. And that gives today's patients a huge advantage. No one is questioning the potential for disruption in sectors like manufacturing or retail, but there hasn't been a lot of talk about how AI could affect the entertainment industry. Do you think that people who work in the creative sector are prepared for the changes that you say are coming? No, not in the slightest. I don't think people in any sectors are prepared for the changes that are coming. I think people kind of tend to look the other way. And from the reporting and the research that I've been doing for more than a decade, um, I think that they should be actually looking directly into the eye of what's coming. Because it's, it's going to be big. How far reaching do you think that the impact of artificial intelligence could be in the entertainment industry? Well, I mean, I think it's going to touch everything, you know, from the actors, the musicians, the singers, producers, um, you know, when you think about a, a movie or a musical number or something like that, the number of people involved can sometimes be in the hundreds. Mm -hmm. And I think that in the future, the number of people involved could be in the in the double digits rather than in the triple digits. At the moment, we're facing a very serious challenge from technological innovation from artificial intelligence. When robots and artificial intelligence empowered machines more generally 
pass the so-called Turing test. That is, we reach a stage where you pick up the phone, you, d you, you call your bank, you, you call a, a restaurant to order takeaway, and you cannot distinguish from the voice of the, of, that you hear on the phone whether this is a machine speaking to you or a human being, because they sound similar, and they do the same job talking to you. Then suddenly you can imagine the impact this is going to have on employment throughout capitalism. In the 1970s and 80s, we had a shift of employment from industry to ser the service sector, uh, to banks, to su supermarkets, to restaurants. Yeah. The moment machines ov overcome the Turing test, uh, pass it, you're going to have, uh, for the first time in the history of capitalism, technology destroying a lot more jobs than it is creating. So you're going to have a massive reduction in aggregate demand. This is going to create more deflationary forces. Income will become even more concentrated in the hands of those who own the machines. But even they will suffer in the long term because the demand will not be there for the product of their machines. So this is something we really need to, look, to, to, to think very carefully about. It is clear that the returns, the money earned by the machines must be spread out. The, so the solution, so we need a universal basic income, but not one funded by taxation. We need effectively to take the returns to capital, the returns to automation, and spread them throughout society. Because let's face it, all these artificial, take your smartphone. Your smartphone, whether it's an Apple, a Samsung, a Sony, whatever it is, most of the technologies in there were provided by public funding. Uh, every time you search on a search engine, you contribute to the capital of that company, Google, Microsoft, whatever they are. So the capital base on which these new products are being created and the robots is socially produced. Those who, the capitalists who own those companies do not have the right to hold the returns to capital because they did not produce that capital. It was produced by the state, it was produced by the public, it's crowdsourced. So we need to socialize the returns to capital. And that is not taxation. Effectively, what we're saying is a part of the rights, the property rights, uh, to the returns of capital, or the property rights over a, a segment of the returns to capital must be flowing into a social fund, social welfare fund, or wealth fund, from which everybody gets paid um, a dividend, as if we are shareholders, because we are shareholders in artificial intelligence. We should be shareholders. Thank you.